Hello, everybody. This is the Audacious Ask, and my name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and we go live every week on Monday, and then it goes across the world and it becomes Tuesday in Australia. Every week that I'm available that I'm not traveling for my business, I'm a coach and a facilitator and I use the tools of something called Access Consciousness. And it's now in like 170 something countries around the world. And one of the really cool things that Access Consciousness does, it actually gives you the tools to empower yourself to know what's a good decision for you and what's not a good decision for you. And it's not relying on the expertise of some guru. You actually get to tap into your own knowing and actually learn what you know about things. And how strange would that be? I mean, we've all been taught to like consult books, go to the experts, you know, check our horoscope, <laughs> check and see where the stars are in the sky before we make our decisions about things. And wouldn't it be cool if you could just check in with you and your body and find out what's good for you? And so that's one of the things that Access Consciousness does in space. And so we have some participants here who are going to have their audacious asks and so what's being audacious? Audacious is asking for so much more than you've ever asked for before. You know, beyond saying, ooh, I'd like a parking spot in front of that store, it's beyond that. And it's also beyond saying, mm, I'd like to have enough money to pay my bills this month. Don't you always create enough money to pay your bills almost always? And so audacious ask is about that. What would it be like for you to have so much more than you ever thought you ever could? And how does it get any better? Ruth, my darling, what is your audacious ask? Oh, well, <laughs> I'm a very bad person. I'm oh my God, you're so bad. bad. <laughs> I love it when people are bad. Can we find out what you did? <laughs> So I um, I recently let my um, partner know that our relationship was over, and um, it's well, it hasn't been very pleasant few years. And I really stuck it out and was willing to be the invitation to something greater. And I, this, this is by the by, I, this I'm, this just popped up. Like it's the not the first per place it's happened where even though I've been super clear with my language and repeated it over and over about what works for me and what doesn't, there are two relationships that I've had where this person cl has claimed to not have heard me once say those things. No, they were too busy looking at your beautiful face. They were like, <laughs> I just want to kiss her. You are so kind. That's really sweet. <laughs> so think about that. Like how many relationships have you been in with people, you know, whether they're platonic or not, where the people are just mostly looking at how beautiful you are or what cool things you have to say or like what neat things you're going to do next. And they think, oh, well, I'll do anything. I'll say anything to have her in my life until – you know, it becomes not sustainable for them to, you know, do anything or be anything so that you'll stay in their life. Yeah, plus all the unconsciousness and anti-consciousness that was really... Yeah. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I suppose um, my audacious ask is to be me all the way through this because I in the last couple of days I've slightly lost myself in this process um and you know a few a couple like even the day before I had had the most phenomenal day I was so me so you know so much ease with being me and creating great stuff and now I'm just like yeah, so my audacious ask is to, is, it would be a really great possibility to um, outcreate judgment and all the other crummy stuff that takes place. Mm -hmm. Like, do you get what I'm saying? My yeah, audacious totally, ask is. Totally be been there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here, well, let's do something with your body instead of going all cognitive on this one. Cool. Okay, <laughs> so check into all of the. Um, cells in your body. I'll 
trillion, million, jillion of them. Wow. How many of them have switched themselves off so that they don't have to deal with this? Yeah. Okay. So cool. So what invitation can you be to them that you actually aren't going to deal with this? You're going to choose something different that's light and bright and fun for you. Okay. It's starting to turn back on again. So turn them on. Just like a little dimmer switch. Just turn them back on again. On, 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 on. Faster, 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 faster. Okay. And then when cells are under stress, um, instead of being nice and spherical, they go like this. Yeah. <laughs> so invite them to open. Open, 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 open. Okay. And then the, um, the interstitial fluid. So um, the fluid that goes around the cell, no matter what shape it is, that gets kind of stagnant when we're under stress. Um, because it's an um, it's a secondary function. Cellular respiration is a secondary function. Like if adrenal hits, um, what happens is all of the blood goes to your arms and legs so that you can either run away really fast or um, beat somebody up or some combination of running away and beating people up at the same time. <laughs> so all of the lifetimes where stress created an adrenal pump Check into your adrenals and say, it's okay. <laughs> Nobody's chasing us. <laughs> We're doing all this shit ourselves. <laughs> thank you, adrenals. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and your guts. What happens is all of the, um, the blood runs out of your guts, too, um, because it's running into your arms and legs. So you just invite it back. Maybe put your hands on your belly and say, it's okay, blood, come back. <laughs> I really do need my secondary brain called my guts. <laughs> Just breathe. So all of this, everywhere you're under stress, you don't want people to judge you for being a flitty woman who would be willing to run away from such an amazing partner. <laughs> so you're creating situations where people are actually judging you because you become this giant black hole of judgment. You have the judge me written right across your forehead. <laughs> Everything that is, all the decisions, conclusions, and computations that you've made to never be that person, well, you just try and uncreate them all. Yes. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and puck, online, boys, shorts, and beyonds. So as far as we know, this is the lifetime where we get to fly to Russia, be the ringleader of fun, go. <laughs> Ruth and I are creating a class in England right now uh, where we're going to go away um, around to all these amazing sacred sites and do some like body work and uh, do the access consciousness tools in England. And so think about how excited you are about this class that we're creating together. Yes. I know how excited I am. Yeah, it's <laughs> really. It doesn't matter the creation <laughs> energy. This can get out. You're like, no, you do not match the creation energy. And, you know, I've been giving CPR to this relationship. How long have you been giving CPR to this relationship? Um, it's over three years. Three years of CPR. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And so um, is that kind to you? Not in the least bit. No. Uh, and I love the way you say it. Not in the least bit. It's not kind. <laughs> So maybe you could start being kind to you right now. Yes. And maybe you could just let your cells breathe and just say, you know what, anything that doesn't match the creation energy that I know that I'm capable of has to get out. Great. And, you know, maybe like I talk about being a complete piranha about how my life goes. Like if my kids try to bring me stuff that stinks, I'm like, you know what? Go away. And it may make me look like a bad mom in the short term. Like I had a nice yelling match with my son on Sunday because it needed to happen. And, you know, and then later, like a couple hours later, he came, he crawled into bed with me. He's like, mom, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> so we created something different. I was like, okay. And, you know, even if people don't actually love what you're doing right now, you can actually choose for you. You can continue to choose for you. Just like open up those cells and go, you know what? I'm going to just choose for me. <laughs> even if it's hard right now, even if I'm making people unhappy, even if I can sense that people want me to choose something different, it's light and bright for me to choose for me right now. And, you know, we've been fed this, like, line about choosing for us. Like, oh, no, you're a bad woman and you're a bad mother or you're a bad partner. You know, you're a bad friend. And what is actually true is if people can rely on you to always choose for you, then you're fun to be around. You just are. People are like, oh, yeah, she's always choosing something fun. I know she's choosing something fun. <laughs> And so they're excited about spending time with you because that's what you like to do. You like to choose fun things. And, you know, most of the time when you're not choosing for you, it's a shit show. Nobody wants to be around you except for the people that you're choosing for, you know, the people that you're facilitating. Everybody else is like, oh, my God, I don't want to go to the shit show house. <laughs> you know, we've all had friends like that where you're like, oh, my God, I really wish you would choose something different. And, you know, there's only so much facilitation you can do to somebody who's, or for, or with somebody who's, you know, dedicated to choosing a shit show life. And so you're not dedicated to doing that. You're dedicated to making a choice to choose something different. And so, you know, like, can you give yourself a high five? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're doing high five? <laughs> you some pat on the back? Say, hey, yeah, we did CPR on a relationship for three years. Well, I've been fine there. It's probably a lot longer. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call the time of death. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure you're the only person that's given CPR to a relationship for three years. <laughs> Everybody else gave it five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pope. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that. You know, like anybody listening, if you are in a relationship with someone and, you know, every day feels like you're giving CPR to that relationship, what you can do is you can get some facilitation. You can, you know, work through some dialogues with a coach on, you know, like how to talk to your partner, you know, what things you might want to try. Um, you know, the cool thing about access consciousness is there's no prescription. There's no subscription, you know, it's just based on what works for you, you know, so if you can come up with 25 reasons to stay in the relationship and 50 reasons to get out of the relationship, then it's time to go. <laughs> oh, so all of the 25 reasons why you could have stayed in the relationship and all of the 50 reasons why you're going, will you destroy and uncreate them all, Ruth? Yes. Good and bad, right and wrong, put and pop, online, boy shorts and beyonds. And all of the judgments that you're aware of, will you return them to sender with consciousness attached? Right now, yes. Yes. Awesome. Get them out of there. Yeah, because you don't actually have to pay attention to other people's judgments. You know, you know what you did. You know how you tried. And other people's judgments are just their projections of what they would have done in any other circumstance. But mostly it's just a deflection. They're like, well, I actually don't want to have a look at what it is that I do. So I'm going to have a look at what it is that you're doing to entertain myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> so everything that's bringing up, will you just try to create that? Yes. Kind of bad, right or wrong, pun and puck, all nine boy shirts and beyonds. Nice. Yeah, Cassie says she did CPR on her relationship for 16 years. I'm getting her a t-shirt that says, I never quit. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love it. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, too. My pleasure. That was the audacious ask. And so if you're listening to something here and you're like, wow, that's really interesting, I would sure love it for you to come and have an audacious ask with us next week. Uh, we go live every Monday or Tuesday as we go across the globe and you are invited to ask more audaciously and whatever that is for you, you know, what would it be like for you to have a little too much of something in your life? <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it when my clients ask for way too much. So I'm going to bring everybody on just now. And before I go, boy, I am creating these invitations for people to meet me in all of these gorgeous places across the globe. So if you go to classes.jennifercramerlewis.com, you're going to see all of these invitations start to pop up. And I wonder what it would be like for you to join me in all of these gorgeous places around the world. Or don't. You can just stay at home if you want. <laughs> poke, poke. All right, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. 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 Thank you so awesome. much. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Beautiful.